Recently, you may have heard about Singapore being in the news for its approval of lab-grown meat. But what exactly is it, and what does this mean? So let's start off with the basics. Cultivated meat does not refer to veggie burgers or organic meat or grass-fed meat, or meat that has just been washed really well. It actually is an animal product that comes from a totally different production model. We are all somewhat familiar with the current process for meat. We'll have an animal like a cow, which will feed until it's full grown and then slaughter for meat. Cultivated meat is quite different. At its base level, it involves growing meat in a lab using animal cells. This is why it's called cultivated meat, like clean energy. It's a way to get the same product without all the current problems associated with meat. As great as the scientists are at creating cultivated meat, naming it has been a problem of its own right. The first term that we've probably heard is lab-grown meat, which, for obvious reasons, did not seem ideal. I mean, we may have no qualms about the safety risks that come with eating many things that come from a production facility, chips, cereal, pasta, but meat? To avoid the connotations lab-grown meat brings, they're trying a variety of other names including cultivated meat, cellular agriculture, in vitro meat, cultured meat. You get the idea. For the purposes of this video, I'll call it cultivated meat, but feel free to pick your favorite title. Though its development feels new, it has a long history. Back in 1932, Winston Churchill published the paper 50 Years Hence in Popular Mechanics with his predictions of the future. Within the document, he says on synthetic meat, we shall escape the absurdity of growing a whole chicken in order to eat the breast or wing by growing these parts separately under a suitable medium. Synthetic foods will, of course, also be used in the future. Nor need the pleasures of the table be banished. The new foods will be practically indistinguishable from the natural products from the outset, and any changes will be so gradual as to escape observation. Let's fast forward to 2004. Jason Matheny was in the midst of his graduate studies in India. He was pursuing a master's of public health, but while he was in the country, he couldn't help but be shocked by the terrible life many animals lived there, with starving stray dogs everywhere. It hit a tipping point when he got the chance to look into a chicken farm. As his eyes watered at the smell, he saw chickens so close together they had to jump on top of each other as you took each step. Their bodies clearly massive as they struggled to walk around on their legs. When Jason returned from the States, he dug up an article about a series of experiments NASA had done from 1999 to 2002, where they had been giving funding to see if they could grow meat in space. The team had managed to isolate cells from a goldfish and grow them outside of the body, proving the viability of cultured meat. When Jason read the article, he was instantly excited. Why focus on creating meat on the moon alone when we desperately need a better way to grow it on Earth? He reached out to the scientists involved and was surprised at their dismissal of the idea. If people didn't want to eat meat, they argued, just have them eat soy. But Jason knew it was more than that. Soy was a substitution, but clearly wasn't meat and wouldn't convert all the dedicated meat eaters. With that motivation, he founded New Harvest, a non-profit dedicated to work for the development of cultivated meat. He started journeying around, speaking with all different people interested in the idea. At a conference in the Netherlands, he found himself able to get a meeting with the Netherlands Minister of Agriculture and argued that if the country was serious about addressing climate change, cultivated meat was what needed to be funded. From this conversation, a pledge of 2 million euros came for research. And this is where Mark Post enters the story. Mark was a Dutch tissue engineer and someone who liked his meat enjoying a ham and cheese sandwich most days for lunch. But he also thought of himself as a single issue voter saying, I vote for whoever will be better for the environment. After all, there are good and bad economic times, but without a planet, what have we got? When the grant was put out for funding of in vitro meat, Post was hooked immediately. After different trials, he presented the first cultivated burger on the world stage in 2013. This started the global movement we have now of people all over the world racing to create all different kinds of products, from chicken nuggets to bacon strips to pet food. The rough process that Mark used is still being followed. It starts with extracting cells from an animal. This can be done in a lot of different ways, from a biopsy from an animal, 
to taking cells out of a discarded feather and is usually pretty harmless. From there, the cells are put into a serum where they begin to multiply and become muscle and fat cells, eventually becoming the meat we have today. Though it may not be in the grocery stores you frequent yet, it will likely be there soon. In countries like Singapore, cultivated meat has been given the regulatory green light and cultivated meat companies across North America are racing to see who will make the first commercially available product. Though these companies are poised to make a lot of money, often the reasons they cite for working on it are quite altruistic. Cultivated meat achieves the ideals of producing meat with a fraction of the environmental cost of conventional animal farming. We can think of current meat production as actually a calorie negative process. We have to feed many more calories to animals than they produce themselves, making it incredibly inefficient. Cultivated meat negates the need for these high levels of resources. It also provides a sanitary environment to grow the product in. Animals have bacteria which is easily transmittable to humans. The common pathogens of E. coli, toxoplasma, and salmonella all come from our relationship with animals. And finally, on an ethical level, collectively, we are eating 80 billion animals a year. In my home country of Canada, 834 million animals were slaughtered when our population remains under 40 million. That means for every person in Canada, more than 22 animals were slaughtered this year. If we don't like something, let's fix it. So that's what cultivated meat is essentially. Some really smart and nice people realized that they didn't like what they were paying for, so they decided to make something better in every way.